All right, gang, we're all finished up with alkanes. Don't kind of empty your head of everything we've talked about, because obviously stuff comes back, but we're charging forward, and we're going right into stereochemistry. But before we kind of dive head first into stereochemistry, I want to talk about isomerism. So basically, isomerism is, you know, there are different types, and it's like, you know, you have structure, and then you kind of have the same thing, but it's, it's different, but still the same, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so of the first type of isomerism I want to talk to you about, it's relatively simple. You have seen it before, but we haven't just addressed it. It's called structural isomerism. So basically, you have a molecular formula. So let's take C4H10, which this is butane, right? And we could draw that out like this. However, and it has iso in the word, we've seen you can kind of arrange butane differently, right? Like this. We know this is butane, straight chain butane, and then we know this is isobutane. The only difference is that, remember, I took this kind of CH3 and I put it right there. So structural isomerism, structural isomers, they differ in the way their atom to atom connections are. However, their molecular formula stays the same. So as long as your molecular formula stays C4H10, as long as you can kind of rearrange the overall structure to be different than it, uh, uh, another form, like we did here by kind of moving this methyl group right up to here, then you have yourself a structural isomer. Let me kind of give you just another quick example just to drive the point home. So, if I were to give you C5H12, just pentane, right? I could draw you straight chain pentane. I could then draw you this if I moved this methyl group up here. I could also draw you, if I took this methyl group and moved him up here, I could draw you a structure that's called neopentane. Again, same, the formula stays constant, however the atom to atom connections differ. Okay, so that's structural isomerism. All right, so now I wanna to talk to you guys about geometric isomerism. This is really easy to spot because it involves double bonds. So what if I drew you guys a structure that you would name it 2-butene, right? This is what's called a trans double bond. The reason why it's trans is if you kind of draw a dotted line along the double bond and then you kind of walk it, meaning you just go across it. You see how we've crossed this imaginary dotted line? We've kind of traversed it. That's what a trans double bond is. However, remember, there's no free rotation here because in the last video, right, these p orbitals involved with this double bond, they have to stay parallel. So there's no rotation. It's locked in in this trans conformation. However, remember, I could draw this like this. The double bond is now what we would call a cis double bond. Again, if we draw that dot, dotted line and then we walked the double bond, this time we actually don't cross that dotted line. We stay on the same side. It's a cis double bond. And that's kind of what this geometric uh, isomerism is here, right? Trans versus cis. Now we get to what we're going to discuss in the next three or so videos. These are stereoisomers. Stereoisomerism. And you may not have, this is maybe a little less intuitive at first, but it will become second nature in just a little bit. So a good example of this are my hands, okay? Left and right. They're mirror images of each other, right? However, they're not the same, because if I was going to what's called superimpose them, they don't match up, right? Yes, I know you can say you do this, but they have to look the same, right? You have to have them in the same position and put them on top of each other. They don't match up, right? We have that same thing happen in organic chemistry. If I drew you guys this structure right here, hydrogen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, remember, we looked at these dashes and uh, dashes and wedges before, right? Wedges indicate something's coming out of the plane of the page or board, and these dashes indicate that they're going through the board, right? Well, if I have this, I could draw something like this. I could switch the iodine and the fluorine, and I'm going to tell you, gang, that this is now a different 
isomer of this guy, different stereo isomer. They're, these are not the same. They can have radically different properties. Bah. In the early 1900s, or sometime in the 1900s, there was this drug called thalidomide that was used in England to help treat morning sickness in pregnant women. However, there were two stereoisomers. One actually treated the morning sickness, the other one caused crippling birth defects. So, this is a big topic. Stereochemistry can have massive ramifications. However, what we're going to do with it is pretty simple. So, let's get to it.